everybody, this is a tech channel. So you may be asking yourself, why I'm about to do a review of a car. Well, I'm a big believer in technology that helps you go green and more energy efficient. So a few years ago, I decided to buy a Ford Fusion Energy, which is a plug-in hybrid. And I'm about to talk to you about how, how it worked out and was it worth it? And how is it compared to against to a fully electric vehicle, something like a Tesla, which I'm getting a Tesla Model 3, by the way, this week. So I'll be doing follow-up videos on that in comparison to this car. So the average American commute is about 30 miles a day. Mine was averaging about 40. So I was looking for ways to cut down on my gasoline usage, which would cut down on my costs, and it would just help reduce my overall emissions that I was putting out in the atmosphere every day. I ultimately really wanted a Tesla. I was kind of obsessed with the Tesla Model S, but of course, there's no way I could afford a Tesla. It was way out of my league, with price ranges at around $100,000 or more, depending on the model that you wanna get. So that was just off the table. So I started looking at cars like the Toyota Prius, the Chevy Bolt, you know, the Nissan Leaf, all of these are really good, energy efficient cars, but I hate to sound vain, and you can call me vain if you want to, but almost all of those cars are just really ugly. So when I started looking around at what was available, the Ford Fusion really popped out because I really like the way the Ford Fusion looks. It looks a lot like an Aston Martin DB9, but has the benefit of costing $300,000 less. Evoking the DB9 was a great kind of selling point for me, as well as having the hybrid, like a Prius, as well as a plug-in. So the Ford Fusion has a battery that is a 7.6 kilowatt hour battery, which is on a good day, gets you about 20 miles of range um, after charging. So that's a pretty good range, considering most the average commute is about 30 miles a day. But the one thing I would say about that is it's 20 miles in perfect conditions. In harsh New England winters, which get very cold, uh, the battery I was seeing in the wintertime would be about half that. So I was getting maybe 10 miles on a charge. So th with a range of 20 miles, that meant my commute into work was almost pure electric. And then coming home was on a hybrid mode, like a Prius. So it worked out pretty well. If you want to compare that to my previous car, which was a Nissan Altima, the Nissan Altima averaged about 22.5 miles per gallon. On the Ford Fusion, on average, I was getting an equivalent of 58.5 miles per gallon. So if you take into account the cost of gasoline in Massachusetts, which is about $2.88 a gallon, and the fact I was driving on average 800, 860 miles a month, in the Nissan, that was over 38 gallons of gas I was using at a cost of about $110. In the Ford, in a month, I was using about 14.7 gallons at a cost of about $42. So, I mean, that's a 62% savings with the Ford Fusion over the Nissan Altima, just from gasoline use alone, uh, which equated out to about over $800 in savings every year in gasoline costs. So in Massachusetts, electricity is really expensive. We're one of the most expensive states in the country. And electricity costs right now about 22 cents per kilowatt hour. So to charge the Ford Fusion, was costing me about seven cents per mile. And that's in comparison to the Nissan, which averaged out to about 12 cents per mile in gasoline power. So once again, I'm saving myself about a nickel per mile. So when you take the cost of electricity and you fold it into the cost of the gasoline, the Ford Fusion costs about $72 a month to run, which is still a $34 savings per month or about $400 a year. So it's not as great as just the pure gas kind of equation, but it's still a savings over driving the Nissan Altima. So the Ford Fusion Energy does come with a $10,000 premium over a regular Ford Fusion. So you kind of have to factor that in. And it's gonna take you a long time, quite a few years to be able to pay that off just in your gasoline savings alone. So the one thing to keep in mind with electric vehicles is that you can't just look at it as how much gas energy you're saving. It's also in the factor in maintenance. Electric vehicles are much cheaper to maintain. There's no oil to change every three months. There's uh, far less use on your brakes because electric vehicles are using regenerative braking, which means the electric motors are what's actually slowing the vehicle down, which means the brake pads are actually not getting used a whole lot. So there's a huge savings there as well. So you have to factor that in. So how's the Ford Fusion drive? It's not gonna win any drag races, let me put it that way. It's zero to 60 time is about eight seconds. So it doesn't have the greatest pickup in the world. And that's even taking into account that it's got a 141 horsepower gas engine 
and an 118 horsepower electric engine. And when those two things combine, you're talking about 195 horsepower. That's, this is a very, very heavy car. And because it's so heavy, it's got a very slow pickup. So don't expect to be winning drag races. Don't expect to be zipping up the on-ramp to a highway incredibly fast. However, it is a very comfortable car. It's got a very kind of middle of the road kind of suspension. So it's not gonna be the sportiest suspension. And it's also not like driving a uh, Cadillac with a air ride suspension where you could be running over pedestrians and not feeling a single bump. So one of the cons of this car is the charge port. There's been many times where this charge port has stuck because it's hard to close. So you think it's closed and then it will, just, it will pop back open while you're driving. Another one of the problems is uh, trunk space. The trunk space in this car is pretty much non-existent. When you retrofit an ICE car for electric, there's only so many places you can squeeze a battery. For the Fusion, Ford took away half the trunk to make room, which has the fun side effect of making the fold down seats completely useless. Yeah, that works. The Microsoft Entertainment System feels like it's being powered by a Commodore 64 computer in there. It may be feature rich, but it's incredibly sluggish. And the navigation system has stopped receiving updates for some reason. There was a Ford recall update for the cellular modem, which I've done, but I haven't seen any updates in over a year in the car. That means roadways aren't completely up to date and I'm really not confident in how accurate the traffic data is. So to be clear, this car has given me several years of really reliable service. It's saved me a lot of gas money, but at this point, I cannot recommend a hybrid car over a full electric vehicle, like a Tesla or a Chevy Bolt or Nissan Leaf. Those cars offer you much better range than they did just even a couple years ago, and battery costs have been dropping. I mean, right now you can pick up a Chevy Bolt for under $30,000, and that gives you a range of 230 miles per charge. Uh, Range anxiety should not be an issue anymore with that. And the cost of under $30,000 may seem like, oh, it's a little steeper than a traditional car, but when you factor in the reduced maintenance costs of an electric vehicle and the federal and state tax incentives that are available for some of these cars. In Massachusetts, there's a $2,500 rebate for electric vehicles. There's a $7,500 electric vehicle tax credit that's still available today for most manufacturers. So you're talking about almost $10,000 that you can get back off the purchase of electric vehicles. So suddenly a Chevy Bolt goes from $30,000 down to closer to $20,000. It seems like a no-brainer to go electric vehicle over hybrid or even gasoline at this point. For me, a kind of a funny part of this whole situation was six months after I bought this car, Tesla announced the Model 3. If I had known, I would have waited, but of course I didn't, so I, I had this car and then ended up putting a reservation down on the Model 3 anyway. And 887 days later, I am picking up my Model 3 and I'm, I'm beyond excited to get that car. Uh, I'll be putting videos out in the coming weeks around my experiences going fully electric and if I'm having any issues or issues with range anxiety or charging the car, um, doing longer road trips, how it's going with that. I'll be putting out more videos as well as potentially how I might be able to integrate my Model 3 into my home automation setup at home because I've been doing some research and it looks like there might be some ways to do that. Uh, so more videos to come on that. So comment down below if any of you drive a hybrid or an electric vehicle, what you think about it and which one you drive. If you don't have one, are you planning to get one and which ones interest you? If you haven't done so already, try subscribing and hit that little notification bell so you know when new videos are posted. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.